So we've done Dexterity, we've done Strength, and we've done Faith Overpowered early, so that only leaves one left. This is going to be how to be overpowered with an Intelligence build early in Elden Ring, and I'm going to take you through the best items and things that you need to get in order to allow yourself to get a absolutely fantastic start in Elden Ring, as well as do a ton of damage with your not conventional way. We're not going to go the typical Rock Sling, Gravity, Intellect build, we're going to do something a little bit different so buckle up let's go ahead and jump into the video now for your starting class typically we would use the astrologer as the intelligence is a lot higher however because we need a bleed weapon to kill the dragon eventually we are going to go with the prisoner because we'll only need one point in strength in order to wield the morning star allowing us to use that bleed weapon to get a ton of runes when the time comes for it. now when it comes to your keepsake you are going to take the golden seed as that's going to give you one more flask charge allowing you to have more healing in the lands between now the goal of any run when starting out in elden ring is to get your first three sites of grace so you can then get torrent to start moving a lot quicker as you won't have to run everywhere so we are going to run out of this building and we're going to head down towards the grafted scion and jump right over the edge because that's going to start our journey into limgrave so as you start your run in limgrave it is very important that you grab every grace along the way that you see you're going to start at the stranded graveyard then you're going to move to the first step then you're going to move up to the Church of Ella, where there is also a smithing stone sitting on top of an anvil. Go ahead and grab that because we'll need it later. And then you're going to make your way all the way up to the Gatefront Site of Grace, where you will then receive Torrent. At this point, you can also use your gold in the seed that you started out with as your keepsake, so that will give you an extra flask charge. For your next item of business, you need to head south along the road, go over the bridge, and continue all the way down until you get to the Agil Lake south side of Grace. Directly east of that side of Grace is going to be a scroll that's just sitting out in the middle of one of the ruins. Grab this scroll because we are going to need it later in order to get some more sorceries. At this point, you are going to head head south towards the Bridge of Sacrifice into Weeping Peninsula. The reason being is we need to go snag the Morning Star, which is located right here at this location at a broken down carriage. After you snag the Morning Star, you're then going to continue down to the Castle Morn Rampart side of Grace, and behind that is going to be a Wind Geyser that you need to take up and go to this tower here on the map because you need to get a memory slot so you can get some extra sorceries. You're going to go around and kill all three of the Wise Beast, aka the Turtles in the area, and once you do that, the seal will be opened. Take the stairs all the way to the top, and in that chest is going to be a memory stone. After you snag the memory stone, you're then going to fast travel back to the first step, where you are going to jump directly off a cliff into a wind geyser, and right there at the bottom to the left is going to be a gold pickled foulfoot, which we are going to need to go and kill the dragon. You're then going to want to fast travel back to the Agil Lake south side of Grace, and you're going to run east through this little pass here on the map. At the bottom, there's going to be a graveyard. Go ahead and grab all the runes that are on the graves, because you will need them as soon as we hit the third church of America so you can level up and wield the morning star in order to go kill the dragon with a bleed weapon once you make it all the way up to the third church of America you are going to grab your flask of wondrous physic level up by putting one point into strength from the runes you receive from the graveyard and then we are going to take the portal right behind the third church of America and we're going to then start our route to Fort Faroth so the portal from the third church of America is going to dump you out right here in northeastern Caled at the Beastal Sanctum you're then going to run south all the way down over the bridge where you're going to run past a dragon then you'll take it all the way south and go towards the minor Erd tree run to the right as to not aggro the Erd tree avatar go up the wind geyser behind the Erd tree and that will dump you out directly behind Fort Faroth. Once here, you can run over to the site of Grace, and now we're going to start dealing with the dragon. You're going to spend probably about four and a half minutes here. While you have your Morning Star equipped, run down to this location right next to the dragon and just start hacking away at him. You also do want to equip your Gold Pickled Foulfoot at this point, as that's going to give you way more runes than if you kill the dragon without it. Now, once you get the dragon to about a quarter health left, you're going to climb onto Torrent's back and continually hit the dragon until you start to see the death animation. The second you start to see that, sprint back on top of Torrent to the site of Grace, jump off, grab the Grace, and if you do it fast enough, you can turn around and the dragon will still be there after the Grace loads, but you will still get all of the runes that you need in order to level up. These runes are going to allow us to take our Vigor to 16 and our Intelligence all the way to 30. We need all that Intelligence so we can wield the Staff we're about to go get, and we're also going to be doing a lot more damage with the Intelligence at this level. Now we need to do two more things before we leave Limgrave for good. We need to head back to the Agil Lake south side of Grace and run north until we can get to the Waypoint Ruins where we're going to 
to find Sorceress Selen. Now that we have a ton of levels, we can actually go ahead and kill the boss who's in here, who is protecting her in order for us to turn in the scroll and get some more sorceries. Between the runes you got from the graveyard, the leftover runes you got from the dragon from leveling up, as well as the runes you just got from the pumpkin head, you will safely be able to snag Carrion Slicer and Carrion Phalanx. You're then going to fast travel back to the Church of Ella and make your way over to the Limgrave Tunnels where you will kill absolutely everything in order to get more runes and a ton of smithing stones to level up your staff. However, when you do get back to the Church of Ella, you're going to run into Ronnie, who's going to give you the Spirit Caller Bell and the Wolf Ashes. Running through the Limgrave Tunnels should be no issue, especially since the Morning Star will kill everything in here with one to two hits of a heavy attack. With Carrion Slicer, you will make very short work of the boss at the end of this dungeon, and at this point we are ready to traverse into our next area of the game. Now the remainder of the route until we come back into Stormvale Castle is going to take place in Liurnia. The problem with getting an overpowered intelligence build early is the majority of things you need in order to do a lot of damage as an intelligence build are located within Liurnia, Ryo Lucaria, and a few other areas within the game. So we are going to do our best to get the things that we need in order for us to do a lot of damage and still be able to not die trying to get the items we're trying to snap. So you're going to take the back way into Liurnia of the Lakes, going on the route that I'm showing you here on the map, until you find the lake-facing cliff site of Grace. Make your way down the hill into the graveyard, and one of the big gravestones is going to have a corpse sitting in front of it. On top of that corpse is going to be a second scroll we can snag in order for us to get some more sorceries later on on our route. So at this point, you're going to need to run all the way up the east side of Liurnia until you reach the Carrion Study hall. However, on the way, in this little patch of grass is going to be a Tibia Mariner. Go ahead and kill that mini boss because it's incredibly easy runes and we're already doing enough damage to make it very easy for you. Now, once you get into the Carrion Study Hall, you're going to need to make your way through up the elevator and take a left up the staircase and there's going to be a mage that spawns that's going to be spamming Loretta's bow. All you need to do is run past him and dodge once or twice when he shoots. And then if you make your way up the second flight of stairs, you're going to see the Carrion glenstone staff laying up against one of the pillars at the top. This staff is going to give you a 15% increase in your damage for your carrion sorceries, and that includes carrion slicer, so this is going to be a really awesome staff for us to use. At this point, you can just run right back out, dodging every now and again that mage that's shooting you, and then you can head on to the next part of our route. The next portion of our route is going to take us from the Carrion Study Hall all the way along this route I'm showing you until you reach the Church of Vows, where we're then going to talk to the giant dog. You're going to give him the Academy Scroll that we picked up earlier in the game, and then you're going to have the option to obtain four new sorceries. You won't have enough runes for every single one, but I chose Carrion Greatsword as we're going with a Spellblade type of build for this overpowered build early. So from the Church of Vows, we're now going to go get the first portion of our flasks. So you're going to run all the way up past both mausoleums until you get to the minor Erd tree in the northeastern portion of Liurnia of the Lakes. With Carrion Slicer and our current level, you should be able to make quick work of this Erd tree avatar. All you need to do is just make sure you dodge those very well telegraphed attacks and run away from the stars that he shoots because those will absolutely shred you to pieces. But when you manage to kill the Erd tree avatar, you're going to be rewarded with our first part of our flask, which is the Magic Shrouding Crack tier. So leaving the minor urge you're gonna head west all the way over until you hit this portion of the map right here there's going to be a bunch of tombstones jetting out the side of the cliff take those tombstones down to the bottom and you're going to end up heading over here to bellum church once you get to bellum church go past that church down into the ravine backtrack and make a 180 degree turn all the way back up until you get to this portion right here in Liurnia of the Lakes. In a small altar is going to be sitting our last crystal tier for our flask, and that is the Intelligence Not Crystal tier, which is going to give us plus 10 intelligence anytime that we use the flask. Now at this point, you're going to teleport all the way back to the lake-facing cliff side of Grace, and you're going to make your way down the tombstones on the cliff side until you get into Stillwater Cave. We're going to be killing the boss here of this dungeon so you can get the Winged Sword Insignia, which is going to proc and boost your attack 
tech power on successive attacks, which Carrion Slicer is going to help proc. You're then going to head back to Round Table Hold and go ahead and use all the smithing stones that you have acquired to level up your staff. Once that's completed, you can then head back to the Stormhill Shack site of Grace and start running into Stormvale Castle to defeat Margaret the Fell Omen. As you can see right now from the fight, we are doing a crazy amount of damage to him, especially this early in the game. I did summon wolves, but looking back on the footage, I definitely didn't need to because I am absolutely shredding him into the ground. So after you have defeated Margaret the Fell Omen and are ready to take on the rest of Limgrave, Weeping Peninsula, and the rest of the game, you are going to have a level 3 Carrion Glintstone Staff, which is going to do 15% more damage for our Carrion Sorceries. We're also going to be using the Wing Sword Insignia. We will have the Intelligence Knot Crystal Tier, which is going to give you plus 10 intelligence on use, as well as the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier, which is going to increase your magic damage by 20%. And as for sorceries, you'll have Carrion Slicer, Glint Blade Phalanx, and Carrion Greatsword. And after you use your runes from Killing Margaret the Fell Omen, you will have 19 Vigor, 12 Mind, 11 Endurance, 12 Strength, 14 Dexterity, 30 Intelligence, 6 Faith, and 9 Arcane. So guys, that is it for our overpowered early intelligence build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I didn't want to go with the normal rock sling gravity sorcery that you guys see in every single early intelligence build, so I thought I would do something a little bit different, and I hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you guys think down in the comments anything that you might have done differently and if you enjoy the content don't forget to subscribe on your way out and hit that bell notification so you guys can know when i'm making more videos i appreciate it a ton i'll leave a ton of content here on the screen for you guys to check out and until next time stay safe enjoy the game and i'll see you in the next one